We're gonna watch the video sent to us. Wait, we got Kane back? Oh, it's two. It's two. It's Diablo 2 Remastered. It's Diablo 2 Remastered. Come on. Come on. Show it to me. Though this be our darkest hours, it may yet there we be go. I knew it was there somewhere. Somewhere out there I knew. Somewhere out there. Yo, sick. Ooh, love the campfire. Oh, that multi shot looks awesome. Wow. No. And console. Okay. All right. That'll be interesting. Oh, <laughs> that leap attack was awesome. Oh. Oh, the Diablo fight is gorgeous. Not even death. Oh, resurrected. Let's go. Come on. So that was super exciting. Uh... I'm Mr. Lamessi. I am a Twitch streamer. I have been playing Diablo 2 for 20 years, streaming it for six years. I probably have over 25,000 hours in this game and just absolutely love it. So seeing the remaster happen, I have to just, of course, ask a very first high level question. Why the D2 remaster right now? Well, Diablo 2 is a very special game to Blizzard as many of you well know. And Diablo 2 also had its 20th year anniversary. So with that, we, we really wanted to stay true to what that authentic experience was for Diablo 2 and bring it to the current audience and, and improve it for the existing audience and invite new people to experience it for the first time. It's also good learning opportunities too for us, especially when we're partnering up with Vicarious Visions now to work on, on a remaster projects like this together. So it's been a great partnership. We've actually worked with Blizzard for a while now, um, a couple years, uh, even starting with some Battle.net integration type things. Uh, we just finished uh, Tony Hawk remaster. Uh, before that, we did Crash Bandicoot remasters, and it just seemed like a, a perfect match for us to work together. It was uh, a shock to my, to my system to first to, to come in and then see that it's a remaster trailer. I was not expecting that. Uh, but then to see the complete shift um, in the design and the art and everything, and I'd really love to hear more about how you came up with the process for what, how you want to remaster the, the look of it, right? How you wanted it to visually exist. And I'd love to bring in Chris Amaral to talk about some of that. Chris, can you discuss a little bit of the philosophy and the design design decisions around this remaster. So luckily we had a ton of like good inspiration from the original D2 art. Um, our, our primary focus is always nostalgia, right? We wanna make sure we focus on getting this right uh, and deliver an authentic experience that players remembered from 20 years ago. Every choice we make with the art, with the models, with the environments should really ignite that nostalgia. Uh, and then reinforce that emotional connection from the original game. But then we came, out, came up with like a 70-30 visual guide. 70% is basically the classic. This is where we don't touch. We don't touch what works, right? We want to maintain those iconic shapes, colors, tones. Everything should be one-to-one -one and faithful to the original. We want things to feel authentic and preserve those original designs. With the 30% new, like that's kind of like where we're gonna elevate that art. Every change we make should really signify that step forward visually. I also noticed that the game was 3D, and can you talk a little bit about uh, the discussion or how you moved and some challenges moving from 2D to 3D? Well, I mean, evolving from a 2D sprite game, like a 2D image game to a 3D is, is very challenging. We basically had to write a uh, complete new um, PBR renderer, so a physically based renderer on top of the old game logic. Um, it's, it's difficult because you're dealing with you know models versus versus uh, 2D sprites, where you have to basically write you have you have uh, 
dynamic lighting, you have dynamic VFX, like a lot of that is uh, an, an additional system that we have to work out on our end. So the follow-up to that question, I suppose, is I wasn't able to see any items when I was watching that trailer. Are all of the items also gonna be remastered? All of the gems, all of every single piece of this? And what sorts of flavor did you decide to, to add uh, to that artwork? Uh, so everything is being redone. So we remodeled everything because everything has to drop in the game. So you have your, you have your um, icon art and then you have your 3D space art that flips, right? Um, so we had to basically model everything. Um, so, when, and as far as the inspiration, we actually were inspired by some original documentation that we found from, you know, from Blizzard North, where there was a huge, you know, word doc of like where the original artists pulled inspiration from. So a lot of that was like very, like you know, historical landmarks, locations, and very, very much real world referencing. So that was kind of where we kind of pulled pulled our inspiration as well. We wanted that that functional design that the original art had, everything felt like it was believable. And that detail really does help to give it some realistic con context and makes you feel more immersed in the in the game. Like it makes you feel like you're part of this world when you can see every little buckle and strap. I remember when we went to the tavern and there was garlic hanging from a beam and we're all like, what's the garlic? And you know, this is all full 3D everything and then they're like, oh yeah, there was garlic in the old game. We go back and it's like four white sprites. And you're like, holy cow, yeah, garlic. And there's hams hanging and everything. So there was, it was really cool to see, like to see it almost for the first time. And it's funny because uh, original SD, like it was made in all 3D. So we actually came across a bunch of screenshots that were a different camera. Like it wasn't the isometric camera. It was like either marketing art or, or something else, or maybe just exploration but there was shots of that garlic in the original art. You just, you could never really see it in the, in the, in the, in the pixel art, but it was there. And so it was, it was telling that they were, they were really trying to achieve something very, you know, very grand with this art. I'm not gonna lie. I never knew that they had garlic hanging in there. I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe a couple white sprites. I thought there were maybe candles or who knows, <laughs> no clue. But that makes me excited to go look around now and just like explore all of the areas in the game just to look at the new detail and, art and see what was. Well, you see it now too because also we have you know the one new feature for for the art on the art side of things is a zoom camera. Um, so it you know it'll it'll help you get in there and look at all the details. Like I it was something that I really felt strongly that like a lot of ARPGs that come out now all have a zoom feature. So this will really get you up and close and personal with like your armor, your weapons, like everything, the runes. Another way to look at it too is our legacy toggle feature where you can flip back between the old visuals of the game and our current visuals. It's not even just a simple art swap. It is it is really the old game running underneath because like Chris was mentioning, our new art engine is, our graphics engine is running on top of the game um, and is mimicking what is running underneath. It's still following all the same data and rules and timings of everything. So we are still being true to the that 25 frames per second of what the game is underneath, but rendering it in a way that has more frames per second. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about that specifically, because when I go into Diablo 2, I'm thinking 25 FPS, and like you said, the game is built on that. My faster casting, my hit recovery, my all of this stuff is built on 25 FPS. So how do you create a game at 60 FPS. So all of the logic and, and how the game talks with the server and everything like that runs on that cycle and that hasn't changed. So we still have benchmarks in all of our content, uh, say for animations of when a hit frame occurs, how long it can recover and all of that. That all matches exactly. Now it can run at a faster frame rate. And so modern games run on time, not frames. So we've done that but all of the logic still runs on those same things. So you can wait for your breaks to occur. All of those things still happen at the exact same. Uh, and that was through no small effort, but, um, but it's super important, right? Because even if you can't see it right away, you feel it when it's, when it's different. Um, we've done that on lots of areas. So for example, the original game only had so many sprites to render your rotation. So you'd have your character and they're rendered out at so many angles and the monsters even less. But you could actually walk at greater 
uh, directions, right? You have, I think it was 64 different squares around you that you would path to and you'd have feet sliding. We've increased that. So now there's more granularity. Obviously it's 3D, your character can run straight, but underneath the hood, I mean, this is a game made back when the inspiration was tabletop games. And so the game is a grid. So it still respects that grid, right? Like on the controller will still allow you to move small amounts. Um, because you push the stick a little bit, but it's still, you're either in a run state or a walk state, stamina is still a thing, you're still on a grid. Like all of that logic, once again, is all being driven by the old game. Um, that hasn't changed. Uh, Rob was mentioning animation. Animation is is also like, it was very, it was very challenging because you know, you, you only had a few of the frame, frame counts basically to basically make that animation. So it wasn't like a modern game where you have tons of different uh, uh, keys to make a very fluid animation. We had to really like maintain that timing, that pace. Um, the posing was uh, was a big a big um, uh, focus for us too. We wanted to get those those like, iconic poses for each character, um, and then just align that silhouette. So continuing the talk of visuals, I want to talk about characters, cosmetics, how they look. Because I know something that I love with Diablo 2 is just. Putting on, you know, a scale mail, putting on a full plate mail, putting on a sacred armor and seeing the character like have the different change and all of that. But some things still don't like reflect over in the color of it or whatnot, right? Some do, some don't. Is there going to be changes there or is it just enhancing all of those visuals uh, and making them just look even cooler? So our goal was to basically uh, be one to one with parity with the original game. So we, we we built every piece of armor that was in the original game and is now in the remastered version. The only difference we did is with the icon items. So we actually now we have a more, a more connected uh, visual with the icon and the, the item that drops in the game. Where before you had you know you had different visuals. Um, that's really the only thing we pushed on as far as modernization. Yeah. So like shields or weapons, a lot of the unique items that you find in the game had special kind of icon arts, right? And that is something we're actually going to be showing on your character in the new visuals. That definitely excites me. I think that's something a lot of people would love to see, you know, a lance guard and have the cool stuff actually on their character there. It will be the same model you see on those icons. Are we going to see remastering of the cinematics in the game? Yes. Yes, we are. Yep, full, the, the entire full 28 minutes or whatever is going to be all remastered uh, with new high fidelity art. It's going to look amazing, by the way. So, yeah, Will no. the sound in those also be remastered and any other sound in the game be remastered? All of the audio has been remastered as well as we've added additional, um, you know, surround sound features. There's more ambient, there's more effects going on. Um, it's just a richer experience if you want to play with your, you know, full setup. However, we have to use that measured hand as well with audio. There's just a lot of very, very iconic sounds that we really couldn't change, right? Like, if you put a skull into your inventory, that pop noise, we don't really change, could Don't change my skull sound. Exactly, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, so there are certain things you're gonna, you know, you'll hear or like you you know your your footsteps running will have some variety when when the rain kicks in it's going to have a lot more depth when you go to the jungle you'll hear a lot more life in those you know trees um but yeah there's just some sounds we couldn't mess with right with uh blizzard you know when we're creating new games one of our design philosophies is to what we call find the fun and when we were looking at d2 again um, we very much felt like the fun is still there. So it's actually one of our core pillars for Diablo II Resurrected specifically was to keep the fun and keep it at its core. And because of that, we're looking at it more as a remaster at that point and like, what can we do uh, based on what the community wants or what features naturally are necessary for, for making this game run on modern day systems and things like that. I think also um, we want to thank and appreciate the fan base, right? This is, um, this is really a true nod to the original game. We want to preserve that game and the structure of that game as much as we can. And if we, we went with, with the, the remake, it would be a completely different game. So I think that was the reason why we chose this. Speaking, you know, from my experience or for, from some of my community's experience and uh, the discussions we've had, we definitely felt like with Diablo 2, a remaster just seemed like the way to go because there's so many, like you said, there's so many of those tiny details within the game that create 
overall, when you add them up, create such a big part of the experience of the game. And remaking that into a new game could be a challenge and could also be a challenge in keeping the fun of the game in that way. I kind of look at it a little bit like StarCraft Brood War, which also had a remaster, um, and how it's like a lot of the pathing bugs and the, you know, duds from the Reavers and all of these things in the game that were kind of awful are what make the game beautiful and what make the game super balanced. And if you were to go and remake it and remove some of those issues, it would change what the, how the whole entire game plays. And so I felt like with Diablo 2, that's kind of the same idea, right? You got to keep some of those difficult details because then it ends up creating uh you know the overall experience that we all know and love yeah we also felt that like you know for a game during its time back in 2000 you know based on limitations or everyone was still mm-hmm. looking at strategy guides or just limited internet um it led to that kind of uh typical game design you see where there was a lot of mystery discovery um so we we felt like that was another part of like you know part of keeping the fun which was to maintain that that uh, discovery of the game as well. So speaking to maintaining and possibly changing, what are the pieces that did end up staying the same? Or if it's easier to to explain the other way, what are the pieces that were really changed to bring this remaster to life? So at its core, we want it to still be the same. So right away, things like the balance, the monsters you see on the uh, spawn rates, uh, item drops, and things like that are the same. Um, and what we're doing is trying to take any of the rough edges you see, um, compatibility issues, resolution issues, um, and obviously the art, improving the arts as well. Um, all these kinds of things you come to know from a remaster, but still maintaining very much what the game is, so. And when it comes to the features we added, this is probably the biggest area where we we scrutinize so much is, is this, is this addition straying too much? You know, does it still create the same gameplay experience and other things like that? So uh, things like a shared stash, we know people use mule characters, right? And so adding a shared stash we felt was the right choice when it Wait, came. We have, a, we have a shared stash? We have a shared stash. Yeah. Yeah. We have a oh, shared stash. thank God. <laughs> now, the way that the shared stash works is there are rules, right? You can't you can't have your ladder characters mixing a stash right. with a non-ladder character. Um, and you can have your offline characters, you know, can't use your online. But for the most part, we're like, people do this anyway with a mule character. So it's okay to give them this feature. That is like the greatest feature that you could add because there's nothing worse than opening up the game, going in, dropping all your GG items to mule them over because you've run out of space and then not being able to log back in or the game's not created or it didn't perm in time and losing all of your gear or trying to find someone to help you transfer your gear over because, oh my gosh, a shared stash is amazing. Thank you (laughs) so much. That's such a help. Like I said, maintain the core was a thing, but the other aspect of it was to see where we can improve, right? So the shared stash is one of them because we saw it as a very common concern, um, especially around muling, which people had workarounds anyway, right? So that is one thing. Another example is we are reimagining the UI in the game. With a new reimagined UI, we're still trying to stay very faithful to what you come to expect. So you'll still have the the classic globes on the HUD screen, the, the skill icons, the potion belts, and all that. But we are reorganizing a little bit. You know, we're trying to integrate the menu buttons and the stamina bars closer together within the HUD so it's built a little bit cleaner. And with naturally with reimagining a UI, um, we have some liberties to add a few things. So going back to the information I was talking about, uh, a big thing we're doing on the character uh, screen is we're adding an advanced stats screen as well. So we're going to be showing you all the information you get from items as well. So you don't have to do that kind of math with like looking at each of your items and calculating how much magic find you have, for example. It'll right. be like summarized right there for you. Something that we've seen already in a, in a lot of mods where they've gone ahead and taken that information and created a little screen. So that's really nice to see um, that you guys are implementing that as well. Because yeah, I don't think anybody like sitting sitting down and counting up the magic find of every specific item, you know, and all of their charms and all of everything to figure out 
what is the number? How much do I have? We've also added uh, auto gold. So you can opt in. It, it is a feature you can turn off, which is one of the things we have to be careful of. You know, a handful of other things where we're like, if you want this, you can turn it on but you can also keep it off. This was actually something that we started looking into when we were adding controller support. Um, there's a lot of paths that we could have taken with controller support, um, obviously for controllers on console, which we're coming out on, but uh, allowing the, you know, just plug a controller in for accessibility reasons, for that might be the way you wanna play. But it's a PC first uh, experience. Like for example, there's, you know, there's still an inventory grid, there's still inventory Tetris, that's core to what Diablo 2 is, right? Taking that away, uh, it starts to become, a, a, you know, something different. And I love that. I think that's the perfect way to really introduce it because you're going to have that split in the community. You're going to have half the people who say, just give me auto gold. It's 2020. I don't want to worry about having to pick up every individual gold stack. But then you're going to have the opposite side of purists who go, don't touch this. Like that completely changes my game experience. And, you know, if I'm speedrunning through the game or playing through whatever, I want to be able to go over and pick up the gold stacks and take that time. And that's more a part of the Diablo 2 experience for me. I want to jump back to features in a second. But before we do, you just brought up console play. And I think I feel like we have to jump into console, the decision for console and how we're going to kind of how you're going to make that work. You already talked a little bit about like auto gold, uh, having that for, to be a little more accessible. But when I think of Diablo 2, I think of a mouse going and clicking oh, yeah. everywhere. And do, how does this to, work on a console? To say it was to say it wasn't a challenge would be a bold lie. <laughs> um, so there's a there's a couple things. For the most part, how we're, the game thinks you're still using a keyboard and mouse with a controller. That was almost a rule we kept. You know, um, that helped keep us on the rails because we didn't want to be sacrificing once again that uh, that authentic experience. But we did want to make it more accessible, bring it to a modern audience. I mean, there are people who were born after this game came out that we want them to enjoy it and, and, and play it. And a lot of those people are used to, you know, just more modern titles that could use a controller. Um, also, from an accessibility of just allowing you to plug in a controller um, helps for, for many other people to get to enjoy the game. The biggest thing I think that we, we are, the two big things we'll say, one is you're changing the way you play the game from being kind of a, an eye in the sky and telling your hero what to do by clicking on areas to actually being your character and directing them. So pathfinding is gone, right? Because you're doing the pathfinding and things like that, which creates some very interesting things. For example, the sorceress's teleport is meant to teleport to, a new, to wherever you click. Uh, so in that area, when you're playing on the console, we will have a kind of a, a default distance that you will teleport to. Whereas on the PC, you can click wherever you want. Same with Barbarian's Leap, although that one's interesting because it levels, but it's it's become a very, very fun challenge. Like I'm a necromancer and I need to target an item on the ground that has a certain keyword. It's working so far, but you guys will be the ultimate judge of that. Yeah, we've had a lot of talks back and forth, play testing and things like that. Um, you know, a, a good, a big challenge we had too was categorizing, you know, all those 300 character skills um, to see how each of them really play, to see what challenges there were. And yeah, like Rob mentions, the, the Necromancer Iron Golem is a favorite of ours to <laughs> continuously talk about because of the various ways it can target. Um, also like a Sorcerer's Telekinesis is another example. Watching the trailer, uh, we see the Assassin and Druid at the campfire. We see a Druid casting Tornado. I have to ask though, uh, even still, I'm, this includes Lord of Destruction, right? This is going to be a full encompassing remaster and not just classic or just a piece? That's correct, yep. We are we are going to be including both the base Diablo 2 and the expansion Lord of Destruction as well. And we're even uh, keeping the mode of playing non-expansion character as well, right? So you could still yeah. play a classic uh, Barbarian, for example, and things like that. Okay, awesome. Because that was something I was also going to ask was, will there be classic mode? Because once again, when you go to the purist, right. you always have the people that go back all the way and they're like, classic is pure and that's it. And I won't play anything else. Yeah, it was very much a mode we wanted to keep. Even based on popularity, it might not be as much, but it's still a part of the game. And uh, it, it still leads to interesting ways of playing too, right? 
Um, a lot of it's even data driven too. So like a lot, a lot of the reasons to keep it were pretty clear to us. Like, let's let's make sure we're not taking something away from this remaster. I'd love to go ahead and start talking about some of the other features, or continue talking about some of the other features that you had mentioned before, because hearing each of these already has gotten me so excited for this game. Uh, and so, what are some other little things that you felt could be changed? Wouldn't change the whole flow of the game, but just improve it a little bit. One thing we're looking into is uh, making it easier to interact with your stash. So having quick keys to move to your stash is, is one thing versus like dragging the mouse to every time you want to move something to your stash. Other things we're looking at as well are uh, like an item comparison tooltip. So in case you're looking at some other item, you can you can hold shift or whatever uh, controller button is. is um, mapped and then you can see what equipped items you have just for quick glances things like that the item comparison is is a great example of us adding it but added it with a measured hand so we don't suggest any gear for anybody uh the gear in diablo 2 is so quirky and different and every class can use everything that us recommending things like that actually was more confusing to people so uh, you literally you hold shift and it's like here's what you got equipped. Here's what it is I think that's the great way to do it with Diablo 2 because I agree I mean, that's I think that's one of the best parts about Diablo 2 the items are so fantastic so unique in their own design that It, it would be near impossible to have a tooltip that could actually recommend one or the other You know because yep. it's all so unique to every situation and character and skill build and everything yeah. Uh, we added five more languages, so that's a feature to a lot of people who speak those other languages. The whole front end is pretty much modernized now, so your your character is much bigger front and center right in the, in, in the beginning, and you'll have a backdrop of whatever act you're in, so that's all been streamlined. You can still you know play online or offline, but that flow has been improved. So what are your favorite changes uh, that each of you have? within the game so far? Uh, whew, there's a lot of fun. It's it's fun to see a lot of the art come to life with, with our new visuals. So for me, one of the things I've been waiting for since like first starting on, on this game was to see that character creation campfire scene come to life mm -hmm. in our in our new arts. And I'm, I'm really happy to see how far it's progressed. And I, I love seeing that. It's just such an iconic moment it's the first thing you really see in the game before you get started, um, and it's 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 amazing. Can I say all the art? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so we added, like Rob said, mentioned, we added a, like an act specific screen in the front end, um, yeah. and it's it's basically this large you know large screen where we have like a diorama of each act, and it, it's just, it's just it's amazing to see because it feels like you're really there, like you can see the detail, you can see every you know every aspect of of the scene and like and it, it just has that very immersive feeling to it so that's probably my favorite part I, I think mine is a little bit more more squishy the i think our game has gotten a little scarier i think that there are certain areas in the game where um just the way that the you know the the 3d lighting is and the way the sound is and i play it on a big screen tv sometimes and just, it it feels scarier. It feels creepier, a little more claustrophobic in, you know, certain areas. That's not just one feature. There's a lot of things going on there, um, but I think it's really, really cool. I would like to hope that it's the, had the original creators had the tools we have today, it's the experience they would have wanted to make. Yeah, I think the lighting really helps with that too, because we're yeah. a 3D yeah. game. That's one of the biggest differences between the original games. So what the game had before, with the sprites, um, with 3D models built into sprites, was not a, a true real-time lighting system. So because we're pushing that with a 3D uh, graphics engine running on top of the game and getting actual 3D lighting inside of those kinds of caverns and corridors makes for a very interesting uh, experience now because you're, you're, it just feels more immersive with, with having light react around you like that. Yeah, I would definitely yeah. say, I mean, I've only seen the trailer piece you sent me, but even from that, just seeing like down in the tunnels or the sewers or you know any of those like like you said cavern dungeonous zones the lighting it was darker and brighter and then things like uh, the skeletons with the fire but it just had like this different i agree creepier feel so i haven't seen much more than or anything more than you guys showed me but it, there was definitely a different 
feel to the game. And I loved the fire the most, I think. Just watching, like, the Sorceress Meteor was, like, gorgeous. Uh, fire and Lightning, once we got all the effects up and running, uh, that was definitely a couple of times where we would be just in a review and we're like, oh, like, and we, 10 minutes would go by and we're like, oh, crap, we had a meeting. We were just playing now. Um, <laughs> another thing that, yeah. that kind of goes without saying that, be, just because it's 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 parody, but uh, eight player multiplayer, um, that just works. But uh, once again, it was, it was tricky to get that going. So with multiplayer, are there going to be any changes, any differences in there from PVP to trading to how players interact, you, you know, units blocking each other? And, I mean, all sorts of stuff. So with multiplayer, uh, we want to keep all the features you've known and loved there. So PVP will still be there down to like opening the party window and engaging hostility. Um, trading is still going to function the same as you know. You know, you can go into games, trade items or talk in chat channels and things like that. Areas of improvement though, like I said, going back to my mentioning of, of reimagining a lot of the UI, um, improvements to the Balamut lobby. Um, so we're trying to look at some things like improving uh, like how you browse uh, server games. Like so when you're looking at a game to join um, and typing passwords and things like that, that's the kind of area we're trying to see how we could smooth out in ways like um, making sure you can browse uh, normal games, nightmare games, and hell games, even though you've graduated to the the higher <laughs> difficulty. Uh, I'm sure you've known that. There's respect. nothing nothing worse than accidentally killing Bale in Nightmare when you're trying to do Nightmare Bale runs, and you're like, I can't find any of the games anymore for Nightmare Bale runs. But you can if you log into a separate character. Right, you go to a separate character and, and then look that, at. That was kind of our, our, our logic, <laughs> right? We want it. We want we saw since there are workarounds there that that made it uh, easier for us to make the decision of, of allowing some of those things. Um, another change is also looking into uh, reducing ladder seasons overall. So right now ladder seasons in Diablo 2 are six months and we're mm -hmm. looking at reducing that as well to help uh, have more engagement um, and, and kind of drive more incentives too. You know, six months is a long time um, and we're looking into like if, if we make it shorter, we could probably have greater beats throughout the year as well as seeing people strive harder for getting like that to that level 99, right? So is there going to be any reward change on that? Or will it just simply be, you know, the same standard, you get to 99, you're 99 on that leaderboard. And I mean, that's a giant reward in itself, but I don't know if there's any uh, other piece go up on the Battle.net website or something. We're not looking into adding any thing beyond what the game really did. But in some ways, there, there there will be some things that kind of come out of because of what we changed. So we have the ladder, the leaderboard, right, where you can see each class going to level 99. There are easier ways to filter through that. Um, mm -hmm. And we're also looking into to saving that, right? So you can always look back to previous um, okay. seasons as well. So in, in a way, we're creating that kind of legacy now that has yeah. kind of been dropped from the past. So. That's that's one advantage is you kind of, your names could be there, in, in, in the legacy you look in the past. I mean, I think that would be cool enough. Just anything to keep it there as like a forever. Like this was season one, season two. You know, like that's when I got my ninety nine. Because I know a lot of people like to go and reflect kind of on their old characters and pushes and stuff like that. Character um, expiration will not be a thing anymore, by the way. Ooh, <laughs> Due to modern okay. Battle.net integrations, we do not have to, <laughs> you will not have to worry about refreshing your characters, so they will stay with you. Awesome. Um, will there be anything different with, like, character names then, if that's the case? Oh, yeah. So this is one that we talked about for a very, very long time. So uh, because we are moving to global servers uh, and we have um, cross-progression, uh, we will allow duplicate names um, because with everyone being in the same thing across all consoles and all platforms and other things like that, you would very quickly bump into duplicates um, yeah. like day one. And so we are allowing duplicate names. However, they will also be um, appended with your your gamer tag or your Battle.net ID or other things like that so that you are still unique. Um, but this also allows us to get for people to play the game quicker because we can give you we can auto fill in your name, um, other things like that. Rob touched on it a little bit, but another mention there was going to global servers as well. So this is a new thing we're doing where 
the concept of US, West, US, East, uh, Asia regions um, and EU are no longer going to be a thing in terms of like um, being on separated servers. So now for the push for a global uh, play with, with Diablo 2, you can now be able to join across people around the world. I think that's a fantastic change. That's always been one of the like saddest parts is like, they're on EU and I'm on, you know, US East and then my other friends on US West. And it's like, how do we get us all together? You know, like, exactly. okay, somebody has to make a sacrifice there. Um, and so this is, that seems like a really positive change. So far you guys are killing it. I'm loving all, I mean, uh, absolutely. I just want to say like, I'm loving all of the changes and all of the decisions that have been made. It feels like you're really respecting the integrity of the game, but really bringing in a lot of that quality of life because Diablo 2 just had some of those pain points like muling and separate servers and all of that. Um, so I just I just want to throw that out there really quick. There's a lot of yeah, love and care going on into this. Like we're, we're very passionate about Diablo 2, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I can even give you a little anecdote of um, when I s started on, on the team, um, I was asking around too, naturally as a designer, I want to know as much as possible about this game in order to make good decisions on, on a remaster. So I asked around like, uh, what, what kind of files and, and leftover archives do we have um, from, from before, from Blizzard North? And uh, I was told, like I was given some, and like this, I was told that was it, um, which I quickly disbelieved because I, I like to just do my own little digging arounds to find out things. So I dug around a lot in a lot of archives and I looked around in different teams as well because naturally a game from 20 years ago, people have moved on different teams and, and like where has data moved around across our other games across Blizzard. So it was, it was within folders within folders, I like to say, that I found a lot of old source files from Diablo 2 a lot of things like within folders of saying stuff we should archive and there was a lot of stuff to archive indeed because there are a lot of things like we're talking like uh, uh model source files old tools uh that, that blizzard north used to create like the sprites and things like that all these things i i spent months and months organizing and and communicate that out to the team and help uh, getting blizzard library team and other people to help out too to help yeah. share as much information as possible which helps a lot with with when we're adapting some of these models and whatnot and making new new art out of it because you know sometimes those pixels aren't good enough and if we have some kind of source model to look at if we have it now we can make even closer decisions on that day when he found that i think that really helped like helped me greatly like we sent all of that imagery even the models i think we sent over to um to the outsource teams and different art teams um which they used as like a a, a stepping stone the only only piece of art we actually reused one to one um, were Tyrael's wings. So we took this, we actually took the Tyrael wings from the old uh, Max file, and then just repurposed that for for hours. Like we did very little work, very little modernization of that. We just made it work. Um, but yeah, we did follow a lot of the rules that um, the old game actually used. For like uh, another example is the uh, the succubus, the succubus and witch. I think the old the old Blizzard North model they reused the assassin mesh for for the body and we do the same thing we use our assassin mesh for the for the succubus. Yeah, a lot of fun discoveries that we're actually kind of making the same decisions on in interesting ways. Another example too, like is uh, find like because we found a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of uh, old texture files for some environments on the game. So another example is like the walls you see in the Act Two tombs. Um, with those kinds of like uh, paintings on them, are the same are the same textures we're using because we found the the source files for those. Any symbology we we have questions on, we always like jump into that archive, try to find some kind of source or reference or something, and we just reuse it as much as possible. We want this to be as true as as possible. That could even carry over to the cinematics too. You know, like uh, a lot of the cinematics cover the same locations. Think of like Tal Rasha's tomb with uh, Bale in front of it, and there's all those runes going on behind them. Finding sources like that to try to match as much as possible was a goal and I'm glad to say we did find the, those kinds of things and they're matching it very well so it's helping our cinematics too. There was even concepts we, we repurposed like we found a couple concepts that were were amazing from you know 20 years ago um, the Bloodhawk and the Bloodhawk Nest and we used that completely to, to, to rebuild our new asset. 
I mean, that's fascinating. I feel like I could just sit here for hours and hours, days, if you guys talk through every single thing you found in the source files. I could too. I, I'm still organizing it to this day. I still <laughs> could find something that could work out. As I put it, I'm very meticulous with this stuff because yeah. I love it so much. You know, I'm yeah. I'm putting like categorizing everything. Like this is everything I found on War Eve. This is everything I found on on the Greater Mummy Monster or Bale or something. And then if if Chris comes to me and needs help with like some kind of uh, way of identifying what parts of the creatures are or something, I even go through lengths of like seeing if I could open up those models. Um, and actually render like re-rendering them out in a way that we could actually see it in higher detail and like you know see like what like oh the greater mummy is showing like part of his bone on his knee so we should try to match that or something like that and there's a lot of interesting stories and references that we actually used to create the new art by re-rendering models out to see everything yeah it was literally like video game archaeology and, and even learning how parts of d1 were made parts of the code that were commented out totally geek out on just all of the you know, because it's, it's, it's a, a game that we all kind of grew up in, and a lot of us got into the games industry because of these types of games, and this game in particular, right? Like, yeah. And so we, it's almost like we're treating it like a classic car, right? Like, okay, it probably shouldn't run on leaded gas anymore, but you really can't change it, right? You just got to make it, you know, good enough, uh, even better, you know, than they remember, and... Uh, good for another 20 years. Yeah, and even like, you know, mention of Diablo 1 is very key too. Like, we, we look at Diablo 1 as well because naturally this being a sequel to Diablo 1, especially within the time span of, of when it came, like like Diablo 1, you know, was 1996 and Diablo 2, 2000. A lot of things carried over um, throughout development. So going back to see Diablo 1 and what it's like also helped us uh, make decisions, even some of the arts too, because like we discovered mm. certain things we didn't even realize before until later down the line. Like an example is, in the Chaos Sanctuary, you see a lot of statues um, with these black knights, and those are actually the same Chaos Knights you see in Diablo 1. So like sometimes, some of the things I find even source files from Diablo 1 were useful for us for reference, so we can make the new statues and things like that. Even the uh, the, the Sorcerer and the Act 3 Hireling shared yeah. very similar models, like it was just a, a, an, addition, an addition helmet or little bit of detail on the chest, but that was really uh, the difference. You guys need to do a just like developer archaeology discussion at some point where you just sit down and talk through all of this, because this is like the most fascinating stuff I've heard. I mean, I've played so much Diablo 2 that I know so many intricacies of the game, but like when, they, when there's like more to be discovered, it's like, oh man, I, I'm like itching to know. So I would yeah, love to just listen. The funny thing is like, you know, going back to our like core philosophies on the game, like, you know, we wanted to keep discovery and, and the mystery and stuff. We, because you keep discovering things all the time when, when you play Diablo 2, like all these little hidden rules and informations. It's, it, kind of, it kind of carries that fascination over through development as well. Like we find uh, a lot of things in the code, design documents, models, things like that, that were really fascinating to see like how, how they were made. And yeah, I, I, I learned something new every day on the project. One thing, shifting back to the online play here, I know there's definitely gonna be questions around security. How are we handling duping? How are we handling bots? How are we handling, uh, you know, just anything around that realm downs and all of the disconnects and all of that good stuff that we deal with online what's being taken uh or what actions being taken there so moving over to modern battlenet helps us with a lot of those types of things um to say it's you know lock tight that i i wouldn't dare do that that's like throwing a gauntlet down to the community um to try to break it but all of that should be far more secure now now we do still allow you to play offline, right? Um, you will need to authenticate that your copy is legit, but after that, um, you won't be bothered. And so there's a reason why we leave those characters quarantined away from online. I mean, yeah, we have, we have a server team working on it, and these are some of their efforts, right? We want to we stop the bots, stop duping um, as much as possible. There's a lot of strides happening in the back end of things. So I'm excited to play this game, and I'm sure a lot of other people are very excited. How can we sign up for this closed beta and when will this game be coming out? Actually, we will be doing a technical alpha and you can sign up on our webpage today 
for future waves of invites. As for the game itself, it will be releasing 2021. Well, I just want to say thank you uh, to the remastering team right here. I absolutely am blown away by how much effort and how much passion you guys are putting into this game and, and just into Diablo 2. I've loved Diablo 2 for 20 years and I never thought that the game could get better, but I think you guys are respecting the integrity while upgrading and adding and improving, and I think this is going to overall just better the game. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you having me on and for all of the hard work you've done. Awesome, thank you. I mean, your praise means the world to us. I mean, you're, you and people like you who keep the game going um, for, for 20 years, like that's, if you guys didn't do that, this might not be happening, right? We see the passion um, in what you do, in what your your colleagues do, like, so thank you even more. Um, and thanks for coming to do this, this was fun.